Let's Chris here back with the MK fellows. We're trying to do a little bit different this week. Uh, we've got Lewis on, Salford fans. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Lewis, host of the Generation Red podcast, um, following Salford City FC. So, uh, yeah, nice to see you again, mate. Yeah, it's lovely. So I think we saw you at the, um, the away game at your grounds. Obviously, it's been quite a, quite a long time since then. How's things sort of gone for you since then? Uh, better than they were going at the start of the year, I'll be honest. Um, obviously, we're still languishing around the bottom half of the table, but the football's better. I think that's all we can ask for at the minute. You know, I think it's nailed on that we're going to stay up. You know, a lot of fans were going in panic mode for us at the start of the season, saying we're going down, but I always thought we'd, we've got enough quality in the team to stay up. Um, so, yeah, the football's better. It's actually enjoyable to go to the stadium and watch a game now, which is good. So, yeah, it's looking to finish the season decent, mate, and then kick on from next year. So you've got a former Don Hadger in your dugout, Carl Robinson. How's he um, cracking off for you guys? Right, he's changed the team around. I, I think he's quality, mate. I think just his presence on the touchline alone has been, you know, no disrespect to Neil Wood. I was a fan of what Neil Wood did last year. Obviously, it's not worked out from this year, which is the reason he's gone. Um, but I think what Carl's brought in, he's just, just, just on the touchline alone, he's just a massive difference. You know, he gets the players going. I love the fact he brings them all together on the pitch and makes them go out after it, like, it's little things like that, especially when you're a team languishing around the bottom half of the table, like coming together and speaking to one or two, you know, one or two of the players that I bump into every now and again, like, and they all say the same thing, like, yeah, the, the dressing room is together, <clears throat> at the minute, which is really good. That's really good. What sort of what's one player he, he's improved since he's come into the team? What do you think? Oh, uh, I think I think everyone's just come on leaps and bounds, but I think the biggest thing Carl Roberts has done is, I mean, he's been. In some ways, the second he came in, we had all our players back from injury, which Neil Wood didn't have. We had 12 injuries at the start of the year. Um, so, he's obviously, Callum Hendry's come back in and Elliot Watts come back in and all the big players that we needed. Um, but the fact is, give like Junior Lewambok, who we signed around Christmas time, he's been a game changer for us since he's come in. Um, you know, and he's bringing back through. Luke Garbett seems to be a completely different player to at the start of the season. So, everyone has just sort of raised their game. And I don't know whether that's Carl or whether it's just, Obviously, because we've got a bit of momentum now, we are winning. Players are playing to the full potential, um, but yeah, everyone's just raised levels like twofold, considering where he was, you know, back in what September, October. Yeah, that's really good for us. Obviously, we went to your ground. Fans were really welcome. We had a bit of back and forth between the away and the home men, but it's quite a nice day out for us. Obviously, I love the guys that you lost. Um, how was your main man up top? Up, striker up top, getting on. Yeah, Matt Smith scoring. If you put the ball in the air, he's going to put it in the back of the net with his big head in there. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's been he had a few he had a couple of games where he's fell off it. But I think to be fair to Matt Smith with Callum Hendry being out, he had to play every minute of every game, and it did take its toll. Um, but Callum Hendry coming in, obviously he's bagged. I think he's bagged four since he's been back in the last five games or something. So him hitting the ground running since injury has been ideal for us. But it's also took the pressure off Matt Smith. Um, so yeah, he's. Hopefully, Matt can keep. I think is, I don't know if he's still top goal scorer in the league or he's around there anyway. I know he was quite high up at one point. Um, but yeah, I think he, he's always going to be a threat because he's massive and he stick the ball in the you know in the air. It's going to hit the back of the net. But I think Callum coming back has definitely helped him out, which has been good for us. Yeah, what do you think's a player that didn't play in that last game that we play in this Saturday that we need to watch out for? Do you think? Uh, I, well, I was going to say Junior Loamba, but he's. They've not said how long he's out for, but he took a bad knock um, to about two weeks ago now, so he's not been in the squad. But he's been a breath of fresh air. Like He plays high-pressing football, which is what we like to see anyway. Um, but I probably would say if Callum Hendry's back in the squad, I think he's been he's brought a new level of energy to the team. Obviously, he's missed out six months' worth of football, so we massively missed him. So I think if he's fit and ready, he did go off... Um, not the last game, I can't remember who it was, when we drew one all, he went off injured around the 60th minute, but he did come back into the squad on the weekend for for half the game, so hopefully if he starts, I think he'll be a big difference to the original game we played at the Peninsula. How do you think going into tomorrow's game? Confident, weirdly, weirdly confident. Um, we've hit, obviously, we started really well on the Carl Robinson. Uh, I think he won, well, he was unbeaten for his first seven games, I think it was. Um, been found out a little bit the last few games, but I think that's that was always inevitable. Like we're playing teams at the minute who are in the top eight. Like that's just the way it's felt for the last few weeks. Um and we picked up some big results, you know, beating Rex and beating Barrow, like massive results. But, you know, we got found out with Mansfield and Gillingham as well. So 
sort of anyone's game. I know you're in a bit of a form, but also you took some big losses recently as well. So yeah, genuinely, whoever turns up on the day is going to nick the three points here. But hopefully, Salford can. Uh, I think it's a big win for us if we could pick. I'd be happy with a point, but I think if we could pick three up, it's massive for where we are right now as well. Yeah, I think your away form has been quite well. Obviously, you went away, so I think it was Crew and you won, and you also took points off Bradford and stopped. But I mean, points for yourselves and those sorts of games are massive. But you're coming up against us. I feel we, we got the second best home form in the, in the league this season. Uh, yeah. We've only lost one home game since sort of the start of October. So it'll be a really interesting matchup. I'm really obviously excited to see how common this is what you guys play in. Um, I don't think we've got a particularly good record against ex managers in our dugout when we're at home, but um, we'll have to see how that goes. What's your um, sort of predicted 11 for tomorrow? Uh, I think uh, Alex Cairns definitely starting goal. He's been, I think he's been signing of the season for us. He's been obviously he was there last year on loan, but he's he's been he's, he saved us in so many games this year. Um, but Alex Cairns starting for me, I'd, I'd probably go. It's hard with the injuries because so far at the minute we announce injuries, but we don't say how long we're out for. So one week they're in and then. Next week they're gone for six months and you don't see him again. Um, but I probably would say uh, Declan John. Oh no, Luke Garbett's back now. So I'd say Garbett on the left, Till, and I think Theo Vassell's back for this game as well, which is ideal for us. Um, right back, I'm probably going to say Ingram, but Ingram keeps getting in. He's in and out of the team at the minute. But I'm going to go Ingram because of his pace. Elliot Watt, as always, captain in the middle. Um, Ryan Watson. Alongside him, I would like to see Matty Lund get a few more games because I think he's really effective when he comes in. But he he seems to appreciate Elliot Watt and Watson together. And then I'm going to go he, Callum Morton since he's come back from Forest Green. Carl Robinson has started in pretty much every game. Um, and he wasn't getting a sniff before that. I know Kelly and Mai's out the squad, that which is unfortunate at the minute. So I'm going to go Callum Morton. I'm hoping Callum Hendry in the middle, just behind Matt Smith up front. And on the right wing, this is where I think since Junior and Kelly are out. We're struggling, um, but I'd probably say McElhenna on the right. Yeah, what's your own score prediction? I'd be happy if we come away with a point, but I'm going to be one of them fans, and I'm going to say two one Salford. We're going to do, we're going to do something. We're going to do, we're going to a big three pointer. Who's going to score? Calamendra. Uh, I'm glad to say Matt Smith. Every time I leave Matt Smith out, he scores three goals. So. Actually, I'm going to take Matt Smith out of it then, so he scores an hat-trick. I'm going to say Callum Hendry in a corner. We're going to nick it last few minutes. Curse tilt. There we go. Yeah, we are up it. Our defence isn't the best at keeping clean sheets. Uh, we've been a bit shaky. but uh, we, Because the thing is, we keep changing sort of our defence and combo every game. We, we don't really have like, a settled back three. We've had Jack Tucker's been out injured since Wedding, so we've sort of had to move Warren Hoare into that central role. We've had Dan Harvey's wing-back player in centre-back. We've sort of been rotating out MJ Williams and Norman in that right centre-back role. So it's not really been like a solid... Back there, but the goal give Mark Kelly's been a lot better recently. Um, yeah. What's one Don's player you're sort of looking out for tomorrow that you think's going to harm your defence and back line? Uh, it was a player that I was impressed with last time. Um, is it Payne, Jack Payne, the midfielder? Yeah. He was, uh, I thought when we played use at home, he, he was the difference in the whole game. He, he controlled the middle of the pitch. Like, it, he was basically dictating the way the game was going for me. Um. I'm hoping he doesn't have the same performance last time. I just thought we couldn't get the ball off him at all last time. So, yeah, I'd probably say he's the one that's... he's Like, the fact I remember his name from last time as well, like, he stood out that much. I think I even said it to one of my friends that was there. Like, he's a quality player him. Um, So, yeah, Jack Payne, I'd say. Is it, is it Jack, yeah. he's Jack? Jack Payne, isn't it? Yeah, Jack Payne. I mean, you'll be in for a shot because you've got um, Lewis Bate as well and they're quite similar players. So we, that we got Not just one, we've got two of them now in that midfield. So... <laughs> They're very good at um they're very press resistant, they're very good at sort of passing the ball around, pick out those passes going forwards and sort of just keeping control of the ball. So I think the midfield battles will be a key one tomorrow. Yeah. But I think the one thing they sort of lack is that physicality, but bait, if he jumps to the ball, he'll win it. But obviously they don't really have that height compared to you know like some of your midfielders do. So definitely be an interesting one. What's yeah. one Don's player that you would take in your team right now? Uh well, besides Jack, um I think we're desperate for a striker, me. Um I mean, I know Matt, it sounds crazy that because Matt Smith is putting goals away. But as I say, I think, I don't know if he's got, he's not, well, he's not, he's, he's in his, you know, his middle 30s now. So playing 40 games a season is a lot on his body. So I'd probably say we're desperate. So I'd say, is it, I can never pronounce it. Is it Azor? Azor? No, I see he's gone to um, Exeter now. Oh, where did he go? Yeah, he went in January, so I'm known to Exeter. Uh, the strikers we've got are Max Dean, but he's that injured. 
Ellis Harrison, Matt Dennison, and Emre Tesco on low from Stoke, but yeah, no, I, I didn't know he'd gone. I mean, for, yeah. for, for banter, Dean Livington next to Curtis Tilt would be the most mismatched defence ever, but it'd be uh, two players who love a tackle, I'd say that. Yeah, but then with the back, that sounds perfect. What's <laughs> your um, your sort of thoughts the rest of your season? Where you think you're going to end up finishing? I think it, I think for me, if we could stay, stick around mid-table, I think from where we started, we'd have, it's a difficult one, is it? Because we, you know, we got to the playoffs last year and lost on a penalty shootout to stop Paul, like. I thought we and the fact we retained a lot of our key players, I thought we'd we'd push on for playoffs this year, but obviously it's not been the case. So I think for those I never thought we was gonna go down. Um I was always quite confident we'd stay up. So I think if we can rack up some more decent wins like we have been doing, um, finish around the mid table, I think it's a good building block to start next season. Obviously if Carl stays as well, because the club's not announced how long he's staying. They don't we don't know what his contract is. Yeah. Um but also, if we manage to retain some of the key players like, you know, Elliot Watt and Callum Hendry and stuff, I think we'd be in a good position next year to kick on. So, I think mid-table is realistic. Um, but I think anything right now, just, let's just stay in the Football League. That's the main thing. But I'm not worried about that anyway. Yeah, I think Robinson, give him a summer. I think next season, he'll probably take his playoffs. He could even take you up. He's really good at building teams, finding the right players for the team. I think he'll suit you really, really well. Yeah, he plays good football. Obviously, he understands this level of football, doesn't he, really well. You know, being even managing the division above with Oxford, like, he understands league football and sometimes it's not the prettiest, but he gets the job done and I think that's what we've missed. Like like I said, Neil Wood, I was quite a big fan of his, the style of play that he had last year. It was fast attacking football, but it's hard to do in league two. It's different when you've got, a, a, you know, a Premier League academy around you. Um, but when it's league two and it's a, soaking pitch on a Tuesday night you just need to pump the ball long and see what happens yeah definitely are you uh, making the trip down tomorrow are you no Miles has uh, got a semi-final cup game at 12 o'clock so he's playing that tomorrow but yeah we were, it's been on my bucket list I've not been down to Don yet so I'm definitely going to do the away trip next year I think I hope you're not playing your next year I, mean, I hope really well, maybe maybe a cup game or the um, it's a Bristol Street Motors trophy now isn't it yeah, maybe see yeah. or something in that um, well, also, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sort of giving your side of things. Generation of Reds will give you give them a subscribe and a follow on Twitter. We'll give you guys a shout out when we do the post. Thank you for coming on. Good luck for the rest of the season. Anytime, mate. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Just come to get it on.